suburban black girl, of course I know how to swim. I'm a suburban black girl. Of course when I take my braids out, my coworkers are going to ask me, why did you cut your hair so short? I'm a suburban black girl. Of course I love country music, but I know how to do the Tamiya hustle. I'm a suburban black girl. Of course all my black friends call me bougie, but I think I act my income class. Shut up, bitch. So, You're not from the hood. Yes, I am. I'm from the hood, blood. Got that strap on me. Suburban black girls are ignorant because they've been confined to the suburbs their whole life and haven't met anyone else. I followed homegirl so fast. Aside from the, oh my God, you sound like a white person comment. Like one time I was being an Uber driver and this guy got in the back of my car. He started talking and I started talking. He goes, oh, wow. Like, you sound really white and I sound really hood. Like that's gonna work out well for you. And I was like, oh, okay. The only other insult that was super creative was when I was in Baltimore and I was uh, doing vacation Bible school. We were literally in the hood. I mean, gunshots outside. I feared for my life, police officers everywhere. This little kid comes up to me and it's like, did you bleach your lips? I was like, no, sweetie. I just have like, I'm two-tone lip shades like, my upper lip is brown, my bottom's pink. No, nobody bleached their lips over here. I was like, what are... Because everybody there was very dark. Like there was no, there were really no like light skins. I'm not light skinned, but I'm just saying like, everybody there had like one tone lips. And I'm just like, how have you not met somebody with two tone lips before? That's crazy. So I don't know how many of you all are multicultural like myself. And whenever, you, if you ever go to like the hood or whatever, and you speak different you let's say you talk white that's what they're gonna say you dress proper they're gonna call you stuck up bougie and all of that stuff you're basically soft if you're not from the hood and i've heard that so much i hate being called soft even though that's just who i am I'm, but i'm a female so i'm supposed to be soft but people would shame you for being like that Especially if you're a lighter skinned person. And I see men go through it all the time. Especially the men. They get called soft just because of their skin complexion. Even if you're darker skin and you come from the suburbs or somewhere where it's not predominantly black and you speak proper English. People are going to call you soft or, or I don't know if people still use the word uppity but. You know what I'm saying? You, you're, you're in that category automatically if you don't speak, if you don't have a black scent. I don't know another word for it. So that's why I made a video a couple months ago. I used to act hood to fit in, and it's true. Because I used to think people from the hood were so cool and stuff. Because they used to make me feel like a nerd and soft and stuff because of where I came from and the way we dressed and the way my men from where I come from dressed because they don't dress the same. I remember back in my day, when I, like the 2000, early 2000s is kind of when my uh, puberty and all that started and stuff. And I remember boys were sagging around this time. But if you came from like the suburbs, you didn't really, you didn't really sag as much as people from the hood sag. And it, I noticed the cultural difference, even the way we dress, the way we, the way the men move and everything, but we get called soft if we're not from the hood. And I, I just never understood it. I always felt uncomfortable going to the hood because I already knew people like to talk shit big time in the hood. Anytime I ever had a beef, I had a beef with my baby father's um, ex, and that's a whole story. Um, she was from the hood, and she said some of the meanest stuff ever, and for years, I used to let that shit bother me. And so one day, I was just like, I can't let this bitch win. But say, people from the hood say some of the nastiest shit to each other. It's ridiculous. I am so I am so un uncomfortable, and I am so not in my comfort zone when I go to the hood. I live in California. My my boyfriend has family in Compton, and I I rather stay in where I'm at, up in the valley. Um, because I just thrive better around multicultural environments. I just always, I'm a military kid. That's all I know is diversity. And that's where I thrive the best at. People don't make me feel small from where, 
for being where I come from, unless I'm going going to the hood or somebody from the hood is around me. They kind of look at me like I'm uppity and stuck up and stuff. And you know what? I'm about to just own it because hell, fuck it. You think that about me anyway, whether I'm like that or not. <laughs> I also hell. And that's when I will really notice like a difference in how people would treat me. Like if I'm in an environment, a work environment, and all the black females are from the hood and I'm not from the hood, I'm gonna feel like the outsider, the outlaw. I mean, not the out, <laughs> the outsider of the group because I just can't relate to a lot of things. Um, they are trauma bonding all the time. I can't relate to a lot of things like the police. Like, I can't relate to police brutality, even though I witnessed it and stuff. I actually was a part of the uh, George Floyd March in D.C. I don't know if you guys heard about the riot out there in 2020. When was that? 21? It was when George Floyd died and the whole country went, you know what I'm saying? And we had a we had a, a riot in D.C. We were protesting, but it ended up turning into a riot and we were stuck in the city. It was crazy. So I am very much, you know, for the cause and I hate police brutality, but I can't personally relate to being harassed by the police. In fact, I get the opposite. I get warnings i never i got a ticket maybe a few times by the police i never i never really get harassed by the police even when i go in the courtroom i get off i never really got in any any trouble you know what I'm, the police i don't know i just don't have that experience so i can't even relate to when the police are beside us my boyfriend is so paranoid i'm like the they're not even bothering us. They're not paying us any attention. We're not, I'm not doing anything wrong. But he has such PTSD behind that. So I just can't relate to a certain, certain things. But that doesn't make me stuck up or bougie. Just because I grew up in the suburbs. Growing up in the suburbs, I didn't have cable. We had to sacrifice things living where we lived. I didn't have cable for years growing up. It took us years to get cable. I was wearing Kmart shoes and Walmart shoes for a long, up until like sixth grade. And I remember those days. So growing up from the suburbs is just getting away from an environment that's bad for the kid, even though you're sacrificing certain things. Like I didn't have cable and um, other things like clothes. And we went to shopping at Goodwill for a long time. I remember having the TV antenna uh, I remember even not even having a lot of toys. We would I would play with like plastic and scarves and pretend they were people. I would like make shape plastic to look like people, and I would play with them when I was a kid. I, mean, I would just play with my. I would just come up with all kinds of things. Use my imagination because we weren't rich. So that whole uppity bougie thing. I don't even know where that comes from. Just because I don't have a black sense, I don't know what else to call it. My grandma used to pick on us whenever we, me and my siblings would come visit her. Cause everybody else, all my other cousins, they never left the hood. But my father chose to take us out of the hood cause he joined the military. And we just spoke proper English. I thought that was just normal. People on TV talk like this. But when I come to the hood, everybody talks different. But I'm the weirdo, okay. So I don't have anything against people from the hood, it's just, I. Y'all don't make me feel too good when I come around. Even when, you know how they say you can take the person out of the hood, but you can't take the hood out of the person. There's this girl that I work with right now. She's from the hood. And you can just tell. You can tell somebody's from the hood. They have a whole bunch of gel in their hair. And I'm not shading anybody who's from the hood. It's just there's a certain aesthetic that comes with somebody who's from the hood, even their demeanor and their mannerisms. She's very masculine in the way she moves, and I can tell she doesn't. She, my femininity kind of gets on her nerves a little bit. So I, I can't help that part either. I've always been feminine. I've never been nothing else. That's just how I've always been. I don't know. I grew up just 
looking at I I I admired Aaliyah growing up so and then I had a lot of um I had a lot of representation of my phenotype in Hollywood so I was able to be inspired by like people like Aaliyah Tony Braxton Whitney Houston I would just those were my role models growing up because even though my mom was feminine me and her didn't get along so I never looked at her like that like a role model I looked at people on TV like role models like TV moms all very feminine women I guess that's I don't know how you can come up not feminine as a woman unless you grew up around mostly men but I don't know I know I trigger women who aren't feminine or they don't like me automatically because I'm fem- I don't know but I don't really care anymore because this is who I am but yeah this is just a real quick video just wanted to make um, what do you guys think do you guys have the same experiences with people from the hood um do you thrive better in multicultural environments if you're from the multicultural places or the suburbs or what are your guys' experiences let me know in the comments and i'll talk to you guys next time thank you for listening someone said the reform suburban black girl needs to be studied i agree so let's do my case per my last video growing up i was only hanging with people until that one girl told me to buy her hot cheeto <laughs> after that my whole friend group was changed everything changed however middle school was ending so i had to find a way to keep it going because the high school i was supposed to go to had worse demographics so at age 13 i was like i'm gonna find an all-black high school so i found one it was magnet in the first day of high school i get there people are like oh you do this like your way i ignore it because i wanted to be fully ingrained in my culture so much to the point that at age 15, I started a nonprofit organization for empowerment and volunteering for black girls. And what do I name it? Brown girls, big things. With the help of three people, we build membership sign up to like 300 people. And this is huge because we're teens. And now we turn the incorporated organization into a club at my old high school. And they're still going strong. They be doing like trap yoga and stuff. My case was whitewashed to reformed to giving back to the community.